So as you know, guys, super short on stock now after runner sales. Um, still prepping the i10. Uh, only got the Mazda. I've got to finish off the Alpha, but that's three cars. that's nowhere near enough. So put some bids in today. So we'll start off. Uh, I'll go for them with you uh, with Mannheim. Uh, bid on quite a few Fiat 500s. I always need Fiat 500 stock. A uh, bit newer stuff. Slightly newer. We've got a 62 plate with 72,000 miles on it. It says the retail's 3.3. Three. Um, knowing the market for them, I think that's probably 4.5k car, I would say. Sorry, 4.5k. What am I saying? 3.5k. 3,495. I've bid 16.25. It wasn't in the best nick. It's a grade 4. It needed some work. Um, bid on another one, a 65 plate with 51,000 miles. It says retail 6,100. I'd probably say it's a 5,995, uh, actually. But it's grade 3. It was a good nick, I needed very minor stuff doing to it, so I put three and a half in for that, or well, three, five, fifty. Um, the, there's a vintage on a 2015, that's a nice spec, it's got tan leather, uh, or oh, I don't know if it's le really leather or not. These are coming all from the, fi um, from the uh, Fiat um, Financial Services, I think, so they're coming direct from Fiat. So yes, this is a 2015, 35,000 miles retail. I think the retail for that is actually 4,995. Um, I've put in a bit of 3,650. Uh, then we've got a Fiesta on a 2010. Book says these are silly money at the moment. I, I think with 83,000 miles on a 2010, I think it's probably more like a three grand car retail. Again, with my prices, as you guys know, this is based on me selling them within a month. If I had a big enough forecourt to sit on them, then I'm sure I could realise some of these higher prices. But I just don't have the space to do that uh, until, fingers crossed, I get my own space with more parking space. I bid 16.25 on that. And then little Mazda, uh, little Mazda 2, always bid on those. They always sell really well for me. I think they're probably the best driving Super Mini there is in this kind of price range. Um, Tamura's decent spec, five-door. 2011, uh, 87,000 miles. It says retail 3150. Again, I'd want to be 2995 just to get it into that search. It's a grade four, needed a few bits and bobs doing from it. It's coming from Vospers, so I know it's a dealer's pie exchange. I bid 1625 on that, so we'll see how we get on with those. Uh, let's have a look at what I put on on BCA. So on BCA, we have a 2014 lounge. Again, Eternal frustration to me that the BCA don't link up the main site with uh, the online uh, section of it. So basically, I have to click through from the main site to online sales to see my proxy bids. But these, none of these, you can't click on these and go into the information on what miles or all that kind of thing. Someone BCA is watching. These two need to talk to each other. They really are pants. But anyway, 2014 1.2 lounge in white. They all sell well for me. Again, I uh, forget what I think the retail for that is probably in between four, six, I'd say probably four, six, something like that. Uh, 3,400 a bit on that one. Uh, Volkswagen up. I had a bit, I haven't done one of these yet. Uh, I know they're probably uh, the choice of some of the younger people would be low with Volkswagen over most other things. Uh, 2013 bid 2.2 two on that one. I know I ten guy if I see him I'm gonna bid on aren't I every time. A little black I own I ten one point two classic. I bid seven hundred pounds on a two thousand and nine. They're not worth an awful lot of car a lot of money these cars. There's probably a two grand, maybe a two one nine five car, I can't remember the mileage. Um but they just always sell and they're good little cars, so I'll always bid on them if I see them. Bid on another Fiesta, 2009 bid, uh, 1,700 pounds on it. I think most of these were all decent grades. This is the probably random one. My bid's probably still too low for it, but I would, I'd would, i want to be safe on this. It's a Chevrolet a Avo 1.2 LS. Um, this one was in really good nick. It was a grade two, so body work wise, it was really good. Um, had a good MOT history, but realistically, what is one of these going to be worth on a 2010? I don't see someone paying, in my previous experience on these type of cars, more than about 17.95 for it. Um, I bid four hundred pounds on it. It's probably too low, but I don't want to be in too much money and have a lot of time for it to sit around. If I ever get it, it has to be a bargain. I have to sell it at a good price as well. So those are my bids for today. What do I think I'm going to win on that? I'm, I'm going to predict that I'm going to win none of those. 
Um, the reason being that cars are going over the book at the moment and dealers seem to be happy to stick them on their forecourt just for the sake of trying to sell extended warranties. Someone sent me a, 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 a link on Instagram earlier today. Uh, let me bring up my Instagram, but I go. I don't think I've been clear. I do have an Instagram page and it does give you little teasers of what's going on before um, I put them out here. So let me just bring that up for you. Uh, um, I'm told a lot of you guys I actually do have an Instagram channel for Chops Gary. Some of you found it naturally, where I do do little posts, um, little sort of teasers of what's been going on, and you'll find out about stuff a little bit earlier than on the videos because obviously I can get this stuff out quicker. So if you want to pop along to Instagram and uh, give me a follow over there, it's uh, chops.garage. Like I say, I put little teasers up there of what's going on you can find out things a little bit earlier and you can message me on there as well if you like i as always i try and get back to people that message me it's hard sometimes if i'm a little bit busy but i will do my best um the other question i get asked a lot is where can i see your cars where can i buy your cars um i have got a website i do link it in my description of my channel but let me just quickly show you that one second as well so Currently, um, I trade under the name Alfa Regazzi Car Sales because I trade out of Stuart's unit Alfa Regazzi or AR Car Sales, so arcarsales.co.uk. Obviously, if I do get my own unit, there'll be, uh, um, you know, I wouldn't continue to use Stuart's uh, business name. So there's a question as to what my new name would be um, for my dealership. So perhaps you guys could uh, give me some comments on that. But uh, you can see you've got an email address for me there. You've got a contact telephone number. Uh, you can see the current stock, which at the moment needs to be updated. I need to get them updated because the VTR is sold and the Daisy is sold. So all I actually have is the Mazda, the Alpha and the Fiat 500. And those two aren't quite ready yet. But uh, yeah, you can go on here and see what the uh, latest stock is. I've got my customer reviews there. So look at some of my latest customer reviews. Uh, well, this needs updating. I've got a few more to put on here. But so uh, yeah, there's some lovely customer reviews here from people I've previously sold cars to. So yeah, feel free to read through those if it's of interest. Always like getting nice customer reviews, and I do. And not everybody, even when people are happy, they don't necessarily give you a review. I do tend to ask for them, but obviously people get busy in their lives and get on with what they're doing and don't always remember to do it. But um, yeah, I have got a good number here, and uh, I feel pretty proud of some of these reviews. Anyway, so that's the site. A lot of people say, where can I see the cars? Um, it's there it is, arcarsales.co.uk. I say any suggestions, put them down below for what my new trading name might be when I move units. I want to keep it fairly open because um, I'm not sure I might want to move into doing more classics and sports as well as uh, uh, and as well as the small cars. So I don't want a name that specifically says anything. Um, so uh, yeah, put your suggestions down below, guys. Fresh service done on the little C1 before he picks it up tonight. Air filter was worth replacing, wasn't it? For sure. So yeah, fresh oil, oil filter, air filter. Only cost me about £26 in parts to do this. So I always do them before I get out the door. I have heard of other garages wanting to charge more to service a car before it goes out the door. But for me, I want them to ideally, unless it's got a new 12-month MOT on it, then you go out the door. If I service it, MOT it for 12 months, theoretically, there's no real cost to them other than the basic consumables like discs, pads, um, tyres. And obviously, uh, before those things go out the door, I make sure they're good as well so um what i love about the c1s you can service them on the ground even a big fella like myself can get the oil oil filter out on the ground don't even have to jack it up so again i think i've said this before if you want to start to learn a little bit about your car save yourself a little bit of money and you're looking for something you can sort of turn a spanner on yourself literal literal little c1 toyota igo platform uh there's a peugeot 107 as well as in there uh, perfect little cars for that you there's nothing that you can't do on your driveway really with one of these uh, for very little cost so with a bit of fighting guys got the old arm out in the end I saw sword through the middle of it on the old cheap little po uh, little uh, parkside saw saw I cut through the arm to relieve the tension because it was obviously there was a lot of tension on it I was struggling to withdraw the back bolt out with the tension on it so saw sword through it you can see it's ovaled that's where it's basically crushed but the subframe itself let's get a light for you the subframe itself is undamaged 
hasn't even bent the lip there so we've got away lightly there with uh, no damage to the subframe it's just replaced the arm I'm just going to get this I've been hammering away at that I've got to get that out now once that's out we can whip the new arm in and then we'll test how straight it's driving well guys I had to fight that back in a little bit but it looked to me like the wheel is in the centre of the arch again the suspension and the wheel is bang in the centre again so that new arm oh I can hear my MGB being tuned next door Malcolm's on the case I'll show you that a bit later um, yes yeah, so it looks like that's bang in the middle of the arch now where obviously before it was offset over here so uh, like I say the, the subframe itself is completely undamaged it's just that lower arm so we'll get the I'll just tighten the bolts up we'll get the new wheel on and we'll have a little spin and just check that it it drives okay um, and then if we're happy with that we'll get this wing off get the new wing on and uh, order up the paint for it there we go guys I'm happy with that that looks totally central in the arch I mean obviously bear in mind the edge of the wing there is just a little bit creased so um, but no that looks central in the arch and it's pointing ahead straight so um, I say I'll get the battery back in get this little C1 out of the way and uh, we'll go and have a spin and see how she's I imagine the tracking is still gonna have to be done um, obviously with a whack like that we need to do the tracking but we'll get a rough idea of how out of whack it really is at the moment A couple of you said the other day when you heard my MGB engine you thought it was a bit tappity so stuck it in with Malcolm over at Car Care, he loves these things, he's great with carbs. So he's gone through, done my valve clearances, um, sorted my carbs, I was running a bit rich so yeah. So she should be running a bit smoother now. Still using her pretty much every day if I'm not testing one of the sales cars, I'm in the MGB with the roof back. Um, yeah it's just great fun, great fun. I love the MGBs. There's always something to do on them. Don't buy them and think you're going to just drive them around like I do. I'm going to have to do something to them. There's always a bits and bobs to do. Uh, I haven't started my body work yet, but I don't want to really want to do that at the moment because I'm just enjoying driving it too much. A few tests in the old uh, i10 and see how we've got on. So, and the brakes sound a little bit graunchy, but I think that's because they've got lots of rust on them. So if I go and let the steering go straight, we veer off, veer off slightly to the, we're going off slightly to the right in the moment. We're certainly not pulling to the left, slightly off to the right, I think. So we're going to get the tracking done. Let's put the windows up. Right, so let's try it again. Oh no, might just be in the camera of the road possibly. Yeah, yeah, no, actually, yeah, slightly to the right. We need to get the tracking done um, and then let's just try braking in a straight line and see if it pulls no it's not pulling I wonder if the uh, I'll just check the, check the brakes out I wonder if the brake disc is a little bit off Um, just because I can hear on the left hand side it's slightly sort of catching, releasing, catching, releasing of our brake. John's got his toy out, we've got to have a quick look at that. Look at this thing, I absolutely love this thing. I tried to get in it, but I can't get in it, it's too small. I'd need to move the steering wheel to the middle, but I do love it. My favourite, isn't it, this one? If I fitted in it, I'd be making John an offer, but I don't fit. I bloody love that little car. I wish I could fit in it. Um, right, what I've done, um, since I just cut off on the last video, is I've gone around and done like three or four really hard braking, and that noise from the brakes has disappeared. So I think it was just to build up a rust, because it's completely gone now. So we just need to get the tracking done. Um, but yeah, it seems like that was just like, say, a build up of uh, rust on the discs from sitting about. So yeah, I'm quite pleased. The engine itself sounds sweet. Um, no nasty noises there, let me rev it up. That sounds sweet enough, we've got air con. Um, is that blowing cold? Yeah, not freezing, but it's blowing cold. Oh, no, actually, yeah, it's pretty cold, pretty cold. Um, 
Yeah, so if anything, guys, I'm hoping this video helps people realise that when you see Cat S and Cat N cars, they're not quite as scary as you might think. Um, you could see quite clearly the level of damage that they've been done on this as a Cat S, which is just really, really minor. It's not not the uh, chassis out of whack or the old seatbelt. It's not that it's not the chassis out of whack or the um, put it back on a dash. It's not that the chassis out of whack or the subframe. It's all and it just that lower arm was bent. And you're right to say, guys, as I said, it's a category S because when the wheel went back, it, it folded that tiny, tiny little bit of lip over on the edge of the inner wing there. Um, but because that's an inner wing, they have to class it as Cat S. So. Um, that was the correct categorization for it but it was just stupidly minor so yeah I mean, hopefully these are the kind of cars you want to look out for if you fancy doing the whole co-part thing look out for these but you've got to know what you're looking for you've got to um, have a good look at the pictures and see if you can get an idea of uh, exactly where the damage has been done it's a risk as always with all buys there's always a risk element with them um, you know you, you just can't guarantee you're going to get exactly what you think you're going to get there's always a risk so you know there's always that note of caution but there are deals to be had in amongst the insurance write-offs